I'm Ken Follett, and in this video, I chat about my new book, The Armour of Light, and why I decided to write a book set at the end of the 18th century, beginning of the 19th century, featuring the Industrial Revolution and the Battle of Waterloo. The Armour of Light is set in the fictional town of Kingsbridge, I like to write stories about ordinary people involved in massive historical change. And the big historical change in the armour of light is the Industrial Revolution. New machinery which transformed the lives of millions of people in Britain and Europe. It was a time when the government of Prime Minister William Pitt tried very seriously to repress attempts by ordinary people to set up organizations like trade unions. They didn't even want working class people to learn to read because they thought that would, was very dangerous. And so there was a big struggle about ordinary people's rights. At the same time, making all of this worse, there was a terrific war in Europe. Napoleon was the greatest general of his time, perhaps of all time and he was the leader of the French army. Uh, and Wellington became the leader of the British army and the two of them clashed, as everybody knows, in the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. So the book is about both of those struggles. And in the end, uh, there was a, 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 a law repressing trade unions was passed in 1799 and it was repealed exactly 25 years later in 1824. And I do like a story where the underdog wins, and that's what happens in The Armour of Light. The character in the opening chapter of The Armour of Light is called Sal, and she is a spinner. And you've, everybody has seen pictures of uh, women, it was always women who did spinning, with a big spinning wheel, which they turn slowly as they feed um, woolen fleece into uh, a spindle. And the object of the exercise is to turn the wool of the sheep into thread that can be woven. It's been done for hundreds of years by this same method. This is what Sal does, it's trying to scrape a living. And then her husband is killed in an accident she quarrels with the people who run the village and she's expelled. And she goes to the nearest town, which of course is Kingsbridge. And she thinks that she's going to be destitute, but she finds somebody who, has a, who is trying out a machine called a spinning jenny, which does the work of eight women, but it's run by only one woman. So it's a terrific, uh, increase in productivity. And she gets a job using this machine. And that is absolutely typical of what happened to many people in the Industrial Revolution. They went from using primitive methods, particularly in the cloth industry, which was the most important industry in Britain at the time. The first spinning jenny would spin eight threads at a time. It wasn't long before there was one bigger than this room that would spin 144 threads at the same time with just one person minding it. Some of my characters in the story benefit, benefit from these inventions. Some of them are thrown out of work and some of them find work and then are laid off because the, the cloth market has slumped. So they move into a completely different world which brings new, new opportunities and new challenges. And, and terrific strife. I read a very good book right at the beginning of this called Liberty's Dawn. Uh, and it was written by a historian who had gone to libraries and found manuscripts which were autobiographies written in the late 18th century by working class people. Now you may think that's a bit surprising. These were never intended for publication. These were just people who sat down and said, this is the story of my life. This book 
was based on those documents and tells the story of their lives. So in a way, a lot of what happens in, in the armor of light uh, is, is based on those people and the stories that they told in their autobiographies. I couldn't tell you any of their names because I can't remember them, but I remember their stories. The big event towards the end of the Armour of Light is the Battle of Waterloo. And the Battle of Waterloo, of course, is one of the most famous battles of all time, much celebrated in English history. And it's a very exciting battle because the two sides, Wellington's Anglo-Dutch army and Napoleon's French army, were roughly equal in numbers, about 70,000 each. But reinforcements for, the, for Wellington's army were 12 miles away. And the big drama, actually, of the day was, was when the reinforcements were going to get. The reinforcements consisted of a Prussian army of about 50,000 people, which would have totally turned the tables. And so a lot of what's happening during the Battle of Waterloo is, where are the Prussians? Why aren't they here? They said they would get there mid-morning, and they didn't. And so the, really the drama of that battle is two equal armies, and one's got reinforcements on the way, but we don't know how far away they are. So it's a great battle, could have gone either way. Most of the people from Kingsbridge who, I've been, who we've been following through their lives, through industrial strife and bread riots and so on, most of those principal characters end up one way and another at the Battle of Waterloo. A little technical achievement that I'm actually very proud of, to get them all plausibly, to get them all at the, at the battle. I spent a week on the battlefield of Waterloo with a friend of mine who's an expert on Waterloo and um, stayed, actually stayed while we were there in a house called Ougoumont, which was right in the center of the battlefield. I've gone to great lengths to try and get every detail right. and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I have. <laughs>